I know you're thinking that's a dramatic effect. I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> so it'll come. <laughs> um, I always like to start off with an attitude of gratitude. I'm just thankful for all the people that are here, all the people that kind of put this together. Um, I get to put on a lot of events with the GCC, and you, can, you can't imagine how much work goes into orchestrating this whole thing. So grateful for that. Also thankful for all the people that came before us. You know, I just, every morning I get to drive into my office and have no problems, you know, I'm not worried about going to jail for it unless, you know, I'm speeding too much or something. I go in there, practice, you know, do what I have to do, take care of our people. I'm not worried about, about something like that happening because of all the people that came before us. So I'm thankful for all that leadership. I like to stay in an attitude of gratitude. That's just, a, you know, if you're going to be somewhere in your head, might as well stay in an attitude of gratitude. So just thankful for Dr. Guy, Dr. Gio, Dr. Rob Scott, all the people that are helping us make this happen. So thank you very much. Um, just going to kind of share a few things with you. I know I got 16 minutes and 54 seconds. So I'm trying to make this work for you because I can, 15 minutes, man, I can change your life. You know, it's not that bad. Um, so share a couple of stories with you. Hopefully you get something out of it. If not, now's a good time to take a pee break. Um, so, you know, just kind of starting off, uh, she kind of shared a little bit with us. I was, we were one of the last classes to kind of go through the whole accreditation process. And uh, that, uh, that experience is uh, near and dear to me because I think we were kind of like forged in fire from that. Um, you know, at one point, our class was about 185 students, chiropractic school at Life University. Um, within about weeks, it went down to 30. Um, you know, it was a huge exodus that took place. And uh, a few of us realized that what was happening was not right. And uh, we stood for that. And uh, you know, some can call it, you know, you just wanted to go down the ship with a captain or whatever, because you guys didn't know any better. But I think we knew what was going on. And we recognized it, and we did something about it. And uh, I think the rest of my life has kind of just gone from there recognizing when the right is not happening, and then doing what it takes, because it's not comfortable, you know? And there's, again, there's a few topics I'd like to comfort, uh, cover with you. One point I'd like to, you to take away is something called comfort sucks. So hopefully I get enough time to kind of build on that. But the whole thing with Life University, you know, the, the whole accreditation process and all that stuff that happened, you know, it was a challenge that was going through that. You go to school in the morning, and you're, you know, just like me driving to practice, like, my biggest concern is not there's going to be a lock on my door. You know, that's like, I mean, it might be there, but it's not like on the top, you know? And uh, that's what was happening with the school. We, you know, driving up to the school every morning, you know, is there going to be a lock on the door? You know, like the last year or two I put into the school, all these credits, I mean, are they going to mean anything? And what drove us was this principle. What drove us was the fact that there's people that are suffering because they don't have this principle. And you know what? If that means that we're going to be uncomfortable, comfort sucks anyway. And that's what we fought for. And you know what? At the end of the day, one of the largest schools in the world, one of the most prosperous, all that, is there. And you know, I'm not taking credit for any of that. I just like to be, I'm happy just being a soldier in that whole thing. And the results are there. You know, we were victorious, and I'm glad for that. Thank you. So I graduated. I, um, I was a big fan of, uh, when I first came down here, um, you know, it, sadly, as a lot of us come down here, I came as a chiropractic miracle, you know, had great results with chiropractic myself, went to chiropractic school. Before that, kind of met some not so great people that were kind of putting me in the wrong direction about what chiropractic was, and I thought it was like a pain-based modality and, you know, just being part of the system and even make some good money at it because I saw my chiropractor doing it. And uh, my mentality of chiropractic was so small, I didn't recognize it, now I do, that my thinking of chiropractic was so small that what it can do for people. And then I came down to Life University and. Um, I was just kind of moved in the right direction. There's a great uh, fraternal organization on campus, got to be a part of that, um, got to go to DE, uh, which was very impactful. And uh, there's a sign that's been on that, at that seminar for over 50 years, and it says, nothing is bigger than life. And you know, sometimes you don't need a whole story, you don't need a life lesson. One thing can kind of cause you to change. And uh, you know, uh, we talked about how Dr. Sid having an impact on me. Um, Dr. Sid talks about a story when he was a, Dr. Sid Williams was, um, you know, Hall of Famer football player right down the street here. I mean, even in the Hall of Fame, he's there. And he talks about a story how at one point he was one of the smallest guys in his position and, uh, you know, things happen and, and his coach kind of like smacks him upside the head and he's, he's like, I remember this big ring that the coach had, you know, and his bell was rung. And then things changed from there. So I would love to ring your bell, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's possible, but you know, for some of you, it just takes one thing. You're waiting on something major to happen or you know, this amazing miracle that's going to happen, and that's when it's going to do it. And it's amazing. Sometimes you just need a smack in your head. 
And uh, you know, he talks about how transitioning from there, how just building it. And so you know, my whole idea of chiropractic being small, sitting in that group, learning from the speakers, and many of the speakers are here today, which is awesome. I get to surround myself with my mentors you know, every time I go somewhere. And uh, you know, the whole point was that it's not small, it's huge. It can revolutionize the friggin' world. And that's what we're doing here. We're not here just to alleviate some neck pain and back pain, even though we're able to do that. The goal is to revolutionize. The goal is to change the universe into a better place and attach yourself to that. And that's what I was impacted by. What was this small became huge, life-changing. And we took that into my practice and the things that were taught, and some of the, again, the mentors are here that taught me this. One of my favorite lessons was that this is just a projector. It projects what I'm seeing right there. You are just a projection in my head, right? The point there was that this is just a movie that's playing in your head. You're projecting it. I took that point to heart. I mean, that was, again, another one of those, you know, getting smacked upside by the head by a big ring. Everything is a projection. It's just projecting my head. I'm creating this thing. Took the principle, took that idea, and we moved to a suburb of Atlanta. And, you know, supposedly Atlanta's oversaturated. You can't build a big practice there. You know, I was like, man, the movie is right here. I'm playing this thing. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let you saying whatever you're saying play it. I play the movie. It's in my head. And we didn't, didn't really give it a thought. I opened my office. Again, it's a, you know, 20 minutes from here, a suburb of Atlanta. And uh, a first week into it, the ground starts shaking. That's never a good thing, by the way. A little practice management tool. So the ground starts shaking. I look outside, and there's bulldozers ripping the road up. So for the first six to nine months, there was no road in front of the office. And, you know, we would meet businesses because, you know, like we went into our town and the goal was to revolutionize the town. The goal was, here's the circle that I've been responsible for, and everybody in this town is going to get to hear the principle, the above, down, inside, out, that the body was made to heal, that removing interference is the way to optimum health. And everybody was going to hear that. Every man, woman, and child was going to hear that message. I don't care if the, the roads are not there. And we would go to like, you know, business meetings and people are like, man, how are you working out? There's no road. I don't care if there's a road. You've got to come to me. I'm not a gas station. You can pick another one. It's me or me. So wherever I am, you've got to come. So I'm not worried about it. Let that go. Right? And we build it through it anyway. Here's another one. This is a kind of a little bit of a joke that I've earned the hard way. But the place we took over, it's a very humble beginning. If you uh, talk to Norm Kilby, a great leader in our profession, you know, he'll tell you he kind of visited it, and I think he drove past it like six times because he's like, there's no way it's that place. It's a really humble beginning, right? It's like an old, shabby-looking place. But, man, you open the door, and it was, just, it was just, you know, and I feel every time I would go in, I'm like, you know, pulling up to it. I'm like, it's not the prettiest place. But then you would open the door, and, you know, it just, it was a different world in there. So the place that, uh, the people that owned the, the house before it was a, was a plumbing place. And uh, they had gone out of business, and... As the story goes, you'll know why they went out of business. But you know, we took it over and we kind of turned this little two-story old ranch house into a practice. Uh, my adjusting rooms were the garages, so that was pretty cool, um, right? <laughs> so you know, like we started seeing some numbers. You know, we started seeing some volume, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, we would see some volume, and it would just smell really bad in the office, like literally, it smelled like poop. And uh, what come to realize is the the plumbing people that ran before us, they never ran an exhaust from the toilet to the up exhaust thing. Like, you see those little exhausts on top of the houses? Those people are smart. They're running exhausts out of their toilets. That's a good thing. Well, the people that, uh, <laughs> that owned our uh, office, they chose not to do that. So, you know, you see some volume, people using the bathroom. Here it comes, punchline. Dr. Butt's office smells like shit. I earned that one. <laughs> and you know what? You'd be amazed how many people would be like, you know what? My office smells, man. There's nobody coming in here. There's no road, man. Nobody's going to come in here. You're in the most saturated place in the country. Nobody's going to come in here. It's here. That's where the projector is. Here. It plays it right here. It's playing it. Didn't take a word for that. Didn't, didn't want to even hear it. Right? I mean, of course, we got those things remedied. <laughs> you know, it is a little more comfortable if it doesn't smell like that. You know, but we didn't let it stop that. You know, the other thing that did it was the comfort sucks. I'll tell you, if you can leave with nothing else, if you can just leave with the fact that the, you are where you are because of your comfort zone, 
And if you haven't exited that, it's because you're stuck inside your comfort zone. Like, how do you see the same number every time? Like, you know, with your volume or whatever, how do you hit the same number every freaking week, man? Everything else is dynamic. Your practice hits the same numbers. You know, it's like, oh, that's our number. That's where we're at. How do you do it? Every week, week to week, numbers don't change. Things are going in. Things are coming out. Numbers don't change. One of the biggest things that's robbing humanity is their comfort zone, living inside the comfort zone. And no doubt about it, it's not hard. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. One of my favorite stories to um, talk about, especially you now I just mentioned Dr. Kobe, one of my, I like to think one of my best friends, if not a family member almost. Thank you. Um, you know, we were at a screening event, and it was a big fair, and if you can kind of imagine it, it was like a road they had taken over, and they set up booths right next to it. And it was like a big fair. It was a big county fair, so me and Dr. Kobe, I mean, even though we practice ways away, you know, a bunch of us came together, and we're like, we're going to do this thing. This is a key example of how comfort sucks and robs you and robs people around your community. So we got a booth, and you know, for whatever reason, we didn't get a booth on the main strip. Our booth was behind the main strip, right? So like, nobody's going to come to you. Nobody can see you. People don't want to go out of the way for it, right? They're not going to go behind the booth. They're going to just stay in front of the booths, right? That's where they're going to be. And uh, you know, me and him, we have a busy practice, so we practiced in the morning, and the event went long. So the event, you know, it's kind of like when at the end of the day, you know, I think we just got a hold of each other, like, let's go there, man. We'll just go have fun, you know, because that's, that's what it is, man. Talking chiropractic, turning people's light on about it. That's awesome. You know, that's where I get, you know, like people are like, what's your hobby? I'm like, that's, that's the greatest hobby I can have. What else you want? So we go there, and there's a bunch of students running it, and nothing against the students. You know, they haven't gone through some of the transformations that we need to go through. And they had all the excuses in the world, right? Why the practice is not growing, right? They're just talking about their booth. Oh, nobody sees us. They don't know we're here. They don't want this. And uh, it was cool because, you know, me and Dr. Kobe, we recognize it. You know, it's like you see something, like, okay. So uh, I grab a spine. He comes with me, and we stand in the middle of the road, spine in hand. And, you know, we just went at it. Because you know why? Because comfort sucks. We didn't want to be in some friggin' comfort zone and sit back there and just twiddle around with the machinery. Right? It was time to go in the middle of the whole thing and move people, and move people in the right direction. And you know what? I think maybe 10, 15 minutes into each other, we caught each other's eye, and we looked at the booth, and there was 20 people waiting to get screened at the booth. I mean, it, was, it gives me goosebumps just talking about it right now. Because comfort sucks. It will slow you down. It will mess you up more than anything else. Your comfort zone will hold you back all the time. Like, you go to the grocery store, you know that person needs to hear the story from you. You know it. You know you can go up to them and have a conversation. And even though they'll say no, which is fine, that's the comfort zone. You've got to exit that comfort. If their growth is going to happen, if we're going to be meeting again and again and again, and from this visit the next time we meet, if growth is going to happen for you, it's because you exited your comfort zone. You jumped over the line. And that's what we did. We took away where the boots were, where the line was, where the comfort zone was, and we're like, screw the friggin' comfort zone, man. Nothing's going to happen back there. Nobody gets their lives changed if we just stand back there. We've got to break through the comfort zone and stand in the middle, and that's how it's going to happen. And the results are there. The results are there. I'll tell you, there's so many things I can share with you. The other thing I wanted to share with you is having certainty. And, you know, I just followed up, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton. I mean, talk about certainty. You know, you can gain certainty from that hour and a half. You know, just sitting there, just looking at his slides. If you don't get enough certainty, there's something else going on with you. You know, and there's great researchers and great speakers on this thing that, you know, will give you all the certainty. I mean, they'll give it to you, but it has to come in here. And you know what my test for certainty is? My set test for certainty is when a mom hands me their baby. It's like, here, take care of them. That, to me, is what I'm 100% certain on what I'm doing, because I know I can help that child. And, uh, you know, just the, the results are there over and over again. So it's not just something in the air, right? I'm not just trying to, I mean, you know, maybe a little bit of a jacuzzi experience, but hopefully you get more than that out of it. You know, the, the lives are there. We just had a recently, we had this little baby girl come in, and she has OI, right? That's osteogenesis imperfecta, soft bones, Mr. Glass. You guys remember him? I mean, she'll walk, I mean, you know, the other day, she was kind of like, he, his, her father was holding her, and, you know, she kind of just did this leap thing, and I think all of us peed our pants. Because we know if there's too much of a trauma, she's not walking away with a bruise. She's walking away with breaking a bone. And this mom, you know, with chiropractic, high-impact velocity, causing strokes and all that, 
You know, she's internet savvy and all that. She can access Google, everything that we can. She has access to that information. Hands me this child and says, here, take care of him. And she wrote an awesome testimony. I don't know, you know, I mean, I don't want to waste too much of your time on it. She wrote an awesome testimony of how good the baby's doing. If we stayed in our comfort zone, that was not going to happen. If we just choose to stay inhibited, being blocked just because of our own problems, right? Like Jeremy was talking about, things that are holding you back, none of that happens. I'll share a personal story, and we'll do one more thing, and I think that's good for me. I uh, grew up in a, in a household where my little sister had epilepsy. And I know we got a lot of, you know, healthcare providers here. You guys know what epilepsy is. And she had grand mal seizures starting at two years old. She's about four or five years younger than me. I mean, you know, you want to feel like you're not worth nothing? You hold somebody having a seizure in your arms, and that's, that's a low point. Because there's nothing you can do. You know, they're seizing. Stuff is coming out of their mouth. It's just like an out-of-body experience. I mean, you know, just kind of just sharing it with you breaks me down. And I've held her during those seizures. I mean, you know, you got to put something in her mouth because they're biting her tongue. I have a scar on my thumb that, I, you know, it's like a constant reminder. It's my little psychological anchor. Because I've done that. I've put my thumb in her mouth because I didn't want her to cut her tongue off because she was seizing so hard. And she kept having seizures, seizures, seizures. You know, my parents, you know, as loving as they are, and it's a great family. I mean, I'm so blessed with that. Did everything they could for their little daughter. All the tests. I remember there's a closet full of EEGs, AKG, EKGs. Whatever. Every test was done. Everything was preyed upon. Everything was whatever. Right? The concept, but never got the concept of, oh, maybe I should get them adjusted. That's where it comes for me, the whole why and all that stuff, not to get cheesy with you. But that's where that comes from. Because I got the information that nothing is bigger than life, and we took that information to her, and this has been about 18 years. Maybe she's had three or four seizures. And even then, there was, you know, other, other environmental things that caused it. And yeah, it's a great story. You know, it's a good for, story for me and, you know, yeah, whatever. There's tons of testimonials there. But it's not a happy ending, though, because we adjusted her, started adjusting her at 18. By 18, medication had completely destroyed her body. I mean, she was on some of the medications that are not even on legal anymore. You know, she, like, how do you go to school being so medicated? You don't. You just, you know, kind of just try to pass through, you don't really get much education because you're just too drugged up. So I would love to tell you that one adjustment changed the world, and it did make it better, no doubt about it. And I'm okay with that. I'm actually, I'm to the point in my life where I'm okay, I'm very happy with just making your life better, even if it just doesn't, you know what I mean, you don't grow another arm already. I'm okay with that. But here's my point. You know, when we're doing these things, it's not, it's not fun to take away time from your family, which I love doing, and going to an event where, you know, some people are going to be pretty nasty to you, and then, you know, a few of them are going to say okay, and then a couple of them are going to come in. But you know what? That should have happened with my mother, right? Like, she should have been walking around, and somebody should have been like, maybe we should get her spine checked. You know, if we do that, you know, maybe it will be better for her. Didn't happen. The chiropractors in our area, stuck in their comfort zone. And comfort sucks. If you spend the next 20, 30 years and you look back and you're like, wow, that was a comfortable life, sucks to be you, man. That's what I tell you. And I'm not talking about causing pain on yourself. Let's not misunderstand this. I'm not talking about self, like, you know, inflicting pain on yourself. I, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about here. You got to jump that line because beyond the line is where it's all at. All the victories are beyond that line. So I'm going to end with a little story. Um, I, I, our next speaker is kind of like, I think it just kind of builds into that. So. Um, like a pivotal moment, I think, in our profession is uh, when uh, Dee Dee Palmer is in court. And uh, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a video of it, or uh, not a video of it, a picture of it. Um, but it, he's, he's standing there with his arms up, right? So I'm just going to play it out for you. And then uh, if you don't mind jumping out of your comfort zone for two seconds, it's going to have you stand and scream something with me. So hopefully you can kind of build yourself up as I'm telling you the story. So he's standing in court, and the court is going to put him in jail because he's practicing medicine without a license. And that's where, the, that's where we're at. So he's standing in the witness stand, and pretty much, you know, the verdict's about to come down. And the verdict's going to be, you're practicing medicine without, uh, without a license. You're going to jail. We're going to take away your freedom. You're not going home tonight. You're going to stay in the cell. And it was a pivotal moment, and we all go through these pivotal moments at all times. 
It is a pivotal moment that right or left will make a difference in your whole life. And thank God he chose what he chose because I don't think we would be here if he didn't choose what he chose. So they gave him the option. Didi Palmer here, the founder of chiropractic, gave him the option. You know what? Just say it's all bullshit, man, and we'll let you go home. Just say that. Don't worry about chiropractic, the whole medical. We'll just say it's BS. You were just joking around about the whole thing. Free to go. Or guilty and we'll put you in jail. And uh, one of the most pivotal points, love to be a fly on the wall when that happened, pivotal points, he stands up in the witness stand, raises his hands, and he says, as long as I have these two hands and there's sick people to get well, I will use them. Here, play along with me. Come on up. You don't have to come up. Just stand where you are. Don't worry about what the guy next to you thinks. Who cares about that guy? Worry about yourself. You're the one who's got the mission. Don't worry about what the people in front of you, behind you are saying. Let that go. It's time to jump the comfort zone. Comfort sucks, right? So here we go. As long as I have these two hands and there's sick people to get well, I will use them. Repeat after me. As long as I have these two hands and there's sick people to get well, I will use them. One more time. As long as I have these two hands and there's sick people to get well, I will use them. Thank you.